Hello, guys. Welcome back. This is Scrotitis, and this is another episode of Scrotitis Plays Minecraft Moon Quest. How are you guys doing? We're hanging out here at the base. I hope you guys enjoyed the first uh, episode here. It's been a while since we've been here, so uh, this is sort of the confirmation episode that, yep, we're here and we're going to stick around for a bit. Uh, so today I thought I would cover one of the items that we got going on in the base down here. One of my favorite mods, as you can tell from my hotbar, is the um, Tinker's Construct. And one of the main building block pieces of that is the smeltery. And this is a, a really nice example of one that I built here. Um, it's got the, uh, you know, seared bricks. Uh, you got your tank, your uh, controller. Got some windows so we can see what's going on inside there. And then uh, we've got our faucets, our drains, and we've got a basin and a casting table set up for both sides. Now, the difference between these, a basin can make blocks of whatever me metal or or uh, glass, depending on what item you have in the smelter, you can make full blocks with the basin. Uh, and I believe also armor. I need to double check that for you guys. Uh, or the casting table, and that's what you use for your tools and your uh, if you need actual ingots. And right here, as you can see, we have a cast for ingots right here so um yeah but i may i mentioned last episode um or maybe i didn't i'm not sure but uh, we have a little bit of a um a little helper here uh a little bit of a uh, guide or not a guide but a uh way to to move along to speed along the uh smelting process if you will okay so what we've got in here and i'm going to show you how this side works we're going to break it down over here this is my test model and then we're going to build it on this one so we have two fully functioning uh basically automatic smelt trees okay so if you click on your controller you'll see what you have in here and we've got some blood so i'm guessing uh zombie fell in there um I actually didn't see it happen, which I'm kind of upset about. But uh, something fell in there, so there's blood. I uh, guarantee it wasn't mine. Uh, but then we have also tin, molten tin. All right, so what I want to do here is... There we go. You can switch these around by... Yeah, control left clicking switches the order that these are on. And the bottom item is what will come out of your drains. All right, so we've got molten tin here. And I think for the time being, we want to stick to making uh, ingots. So we're going to put our ingot cast right there on the casting table. And I suppose I should probably go over the bottom first. This is actually really simple. It's just a bunch of hoppers set up. Um, hoppers work with the casting basin and tables really well, actually. It's a nice little trick. And everything sort of just filters down into this one centralized chest that we've got going on here. Okay, so uh, we're going to do uh, this uh, casting table with the uh, ingot cast. And I'm going to show you, basically all we've got going on here is we've got a little clock. And uh, earlier, before, <laughs> I haven't gotten this fixed 100%. I need some sort of switch here. Um, hmm, I think... I think I may have just figured that out. I don't know. That may be something to do in a future episode. But uh, for right now, we're going to leave things as is. Uh, you don't need this block if this isn't seared a seared window. But redstone won't lay on the seared windows themselves. Uh, let me show you real quick here. You take that out and nothing. Goes here. Doesn't go here. So... Uh, I had to put a block there. I think I will replace that. I actually have an idea here. I may do a sticky piston with a uh, redstone block going up and down. Or maybe something over top of the tank that pushes it in and out. I don't know. Something uh, to pass that signal through. Actually, I guess we could just do a block. Well, no, that would have to be a repeater, and we couldn't do Anyway, sorry. Speaking out loud, let's cover what we've got done here, okay? So we've got our um, smeltery that has 38... 
Yeah, molten 37 molten tin ingots here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to flip our lever here. And you can see the smeltery. There you go. It's pouring out into our cast, right? Let's hop up here and watch this for a second. Okay, so as soon as this becomes solid, it disappears. And that's because of the hopper underneath. If, you, uh, if we take a peek here, we should see it pass through. There we go. And that quick gone. Where's it? And there's our tin ingots just filling up. Now what we've done is, we, like I said, we've just set up a simple clock. And what I did was I hooked this redstone lamp up to it just to sort of indicate that it's running. So that we see, oh, okay, this side's in operation. So I thought that was kind of a neat indicator. And uh, it actually makes the process really quick. We're burning through this. We've already gotten 12 ingots down. Uh, otherwise, what you have to do is you have to stand up here. And let me... Let me turn this off and show you what exactly you have to do. You gotta stand here, you gotta hit the, the uh, faucet here, you gotta wait for it to dry. Okay, it's gone, and you gotta hit it again. Now, if you don't have the hopper underneath, you actually have to click and, t and remove the ingot and do this all manually. But what's nice is you could fill your, your controller up with whatever you wanted. You could put tin, you know, uh, not osmium, but uh, copper, you know, gold, whatever ore you want to fill up your smeltery with. Come back here, hit the switch, go about your business around the base, you know, prettifying your storage room, which here's a nice little sneak peek, guys. I think I got a bit further than we were last episode. Uh, going with some dark wood. I think I'm going to take the pillars all the way up. I haven't decided 100% yet on that, but anyway. I'm getting off track here. And then uh, when you come back, check your chest and you're, you you got whatever ingot that you did. And you can just come back here again and just plunk a whole bunch more right in and just let it go to town. So um, let's go ahead and uh, we'll shut this off for a minute here and go over the actual setup that we have back there. And it's actually really, really super simple. It is just a redstone clock. This is all that we, we've done with it. Uh, we've got an on-off lever, right? So then what we do with that lever is we have a signal that comes through that into this comparator. That then sends it through the block into a redstone torch, which inverts the signal up one block, which we have uh, redstone dust on top of it. Let's take a peek up here. There's your redstone dust into a repeater. Now this is where you can set the speed of your clock. I have it at the full four lengths. Let's go ahead and set it back to the original setting and see how fast this goes. See, it, it's going so fast it's only blinking once so often because it can't keep up with the ticks. We put it back to two ticks. There we go. Real fast, fast blinking, right? Three a little bit slower, and I like to have it on four. Oop. Sorry about the lag here, guys. On four. There we go. Uh, because I know that we don't need those really fast ticking because the casting table doesn't go that fast, so we don't need super fast ticks. Uh, but then that repeater then just brings the signal back down into the block with the lever and completes the circuit. All right, guys, so I went ahead and collected all the materials that we need to finish this up. Um, we got stone bricks, we got a comparator, a repeater, glowstone, or redstone torch, and redstone dust. We got a good bit of that in both places. So, and of course, the most important lever. So let's get over here and uh, start setting things up. Now we've got our redstone lamp here, okay, and we're going to run. This is where our lever is going to be. Boom. All right. So far, so good. Looks like the same situation. Let's, oh, it would be help if I could navigate this a little bit better. Let's get up here. And we're probably going to have to take this out until we're finished. Uh, we're also going to have to do some landscaping, it looks like, on the outside of our mountain base. We may bring some, some columns down and try to solidify this with maybe a tower that might look kind of neat like a sub tower that we could gain access from there maybe i don't know i just thought about that but that could be a cool idea all right so anyway 
we're here we need to carry this signal now outside <laughs> unfortunately uh, this is where our repeater is gonna go uh, where's our or not our repeater but our comparator getting that first initial signal right I believe right well you know we just went over this and I forgot already yeah so we need to build that up and I can't <laughs> keep falling down. Here we go. All right. So now we're up here. Boom. There's our comparator. This is going to go into a block that's going to have our torch on it. That torch is going to send a signal up into these blocks here. We've got this. Repeaters, and we're going to have to shelter it from those pains in the butt. Is that where? Yep, that's where that is. We're going to set this up with four ticks. Get rid of that, and we're going to bring it back. Wait a second. Wait a second. Oh, right. That goes there. And I think, did that complete the circuit? I don't think it did, did it? Yeah. That redstone needs to come. Oh, this lag is killer. Let's get up here. And I think I did something wrong here. I don't think this should be this high. that too close? You know what? Let me let me get stand back at this and take a look from the outside and we'll figure this out. Oh, that well, I'm going up instead of down. That's the problem. There is a block that that goes through. All right. Let's take a peek at this side real quick. That's the return signal that I was looking at, guys. I apologize. Let's go ahead. <laughs> Whew. Take a look at this again. This is not the send signal. This is the return signal. Right? So our lever's here. Right here. And how am I going to get this block this in place? We're going to just knock out a whole bunch of stuff. That goes there. There we go. Now we're cooking with gas. <laughs> All right, so there's our block. We're going to invert this signal here. All of a sudden, things are looking a lot better already. This is the signal that comes in from the outside now. Boom. And this line was right. It was just a little early. So one, two, three, four. And we've got it hooked up here. Now, do we have anything to test in here? No, uh, we don't. We do. You know what? Let's just use this tin that's right here on the bottom. And let's give it a shot here. If it works, then we can close it up. No. All right, now this is a good example of what might go wrong, and you'd, see, you'd look at it and say, well, the clock looks right. I can't figure it out. Well, it's actually really simple. You can't pour tin into plates. That's what you would get by default here without having any sort of cast. So what you need, of course, is your cast. All right, we're going to go back here. We're going to flick it back on, and there we go. And it's working. Er... Worked once. Is our repeater not? Wait a second. All right. There we go. <laughs> we had it off instead of on. So 
We've got our flashing, we've got our pouring, and we've got a hole that we need to close up, guys. But I'm running long here, so we're going to go ahead and call that the end of the episode. I'm going to go ahead and uh, prettify this area up, close it all up, make it nice and secure. Um, maybe when we come back next time, we'll have some sort of defense tower out on the outside. That might be a neat idea. So uh, anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this episode. This has been Scrotitis Plays Moon Quest. And I will check you guys all in the next episode. We will see ya.